now even in this unit you will be having five questions the total marks for this unit sorry is two uh you are obviously in this particular unit as i said five questions five out of three will be which you can be solved two questions can be at little bit difficulty level but let's assume that you will definitely able to crack it so with a positive note let's go ahead first let's understand quickly the syllabus it is basically development and environment development was not the part of the old syllabus it is included in as a new part of your syllabus human and en environment and interaction wherein you have uh, uh, anthropogenic activities as well as their impact that is human activities which we call various environmental issues little bit questions on this becomes bit difficult for the students but i have covered it in a part of theory so let's see how you can you know revise and definitely you should recall all those things so as i said just important points you note down uh, impacts of pollutions on human health the natural and energy resources natural hazards in the form of mitigation strategies and action uh, sorry environmental protection act that is in the form of national action plan on climate change uh, various agreements in the form of protocols conventions as well as you know uh, keto protocol paris agreement international solar alliance so these are very very frequent in last um, two three years examination so i have taken the theory lecture in this form that the important topics i have covered uh, as well as all the topics are definitely covered but uh, ensure it is in very straight format so that you know what is important from exam point of view you can remember those things very quickly and uh, after looking at this video so yes let's start the first session with our uh, uh, that is millennium development goals that is your mdg which is the first part or first topic of your syllabus so basically there are eight goals which was um, eight goals for the year 2015 has been established in the form of millennium summit or you call it as uh, of the united nations which are adopted uh, by United Nations Millennium Declaration, which also is known as shaping the 21st century strategy. And um, this Millennium Development Goals were succeeded by uh, something called as Sustainable Development Goals, which, uh, which has an agenda of 2030. So 189 nations, United Nation, uh, num sorry, United Nation members uh, with 22 international organizations uh, committed to achieve the Millennium Development Goals, which were uh, targeted by 2015 and what these goals are. So now here, uh, the most important part, there are questions seen that they give you the goals and they'll tell you to uh, organize the goals, uh, either, I mean to say, recognize the right goals and, you know, el eliminate the wrong ones. So you have to understand or you have to tick the correct code. So just let's quickly let's have a look at them but this you have to remember so you need to go through it once properly also extreme poverty and hunger to eradicate a poverty and hand, hunger to achieve universal primary education gender equality and women empowerment child morality ment matern sorry maternal health aids hiv to be combated along with malaria and other diseases to ensure environmental sustainability that is not only for present generation but for the future generation also and to develop the partnership goals for uh, develop uh, sorry to develop global partnership for development so just keep the sequence also in mind you don't know what type of questions can be expected so just be careful for this goals which are eight in number which are given as follow the target was 2015 Followed by them was Sustainable Development Goals, which was adopted by 193 countries uh, with an aim to achieve them in 2030 with three main pillars, that is economy, environment, and social society. So which are those goals which I have written in the form of numbers? So no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation. Then you have as decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequality, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life before, uh, sorry, life below water, life on land, peace and justice, strong institutions, institutions, sorry, partnership to achieve the goal. Now, and there are different uh, types of, you know, stories, there are different types of acronyms. Uh, so last moment, I will definitely not tell you whichever acronym, whichever pattern 
to or remember this goals you have learned stick to that but you have to remember this 17 goals even this can be a part of question and which are odd man outs you can get a choice so you have to be careful Next comes is, yes, the International Solar Alliance as per the Environmental Act uh, 1986, one of the concept, which is an alliance of 124 countries, which was initiated by India on 30th November 2015. Uh, it is a treaty-based intergovernmental organization, which was launched by Prime Minister Mr. Modiji and the former president, Mr. Francisco Holland of France. That is between France and India, this alliance was been or this treaty was been signed. The leading European nation, Sweden, this is very latest information which you have to keep in mind with respect to International Solar Alliance because this is latest and International Solar Alliance is a part of a question. So you may definitely get, you know, uh, any any modern, uh, sorry, any latest update. So the latest update as per July 2021, that is the leading European nation, Sweden, has ratified the framework agreement for International Solar Alliance an initiative of India to aim at promoting renewable energy and sustainable development uh, on the date 17th of July 2021. Then uh, the goal is to set the ground rules, the rules and regulation standards uh, for solar energy, as well as to adapt, you know, a massive deployment in the countries which are richer in solar resources, uh, where there is a risk uh, seen, uh, I mean to say where the risks are still seen high, then we have the World Solar Bank, who is the finance, proposed financial agency, which will pool the resources around the world and use them for the solar projects. India has set an ambition of, you know, 450 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030, for which uh, with 175 gigawatts deployment is by in 2022. So, yes, there is a question on this particular uh, uh update as well as you know the question has been between which two countries it has been signed so the the question which is not yet a part of examination is the latest update which you need to keep in mind then uh, there is something called as human development index sorry human development report now what is this report it's an human development index which is published by the human development report office of united nation development program so basically, it uh, talks about what. So this report tells you or it make recommendations for the change that generate attention and debate among the stakeholders and policymakers, which raise public awareness about human development. It means that they promote resource mobilization in the area of development and which needs, you know, uh, uh, I mean to say which needs uh, the most Oh, sorry, and it triggers the responses to needs uh, to meet the needs of the society. So now, in th the thirtieth anniversary of Human Development Report that was conducted in twenty twenty, okay, was the latest series of uh, which was published by Un United Nations Development Program, and it was started since nineteen ninety. So the theme for the year was Human Development and Anthropo uh, Anthropocene. That is the report which focuses on improving human lives. Uh, while relieving our planet, the pressure of, you know, development. So yes, this particular part of the point or the topics can be a part of your question. What is the basic objective? It is help to enable the environment for people to enjoy their life, to be healthy and to create the life. So it is basically, you know, uh, taking care of the environment, but at the same time, ensuring that environment is for the development of people. So it has to be a cooperation from both the ends. So the four, there are four pillars of human development and those pillars are equity, sustainability, productivity and empowerment. Uh, India's latest rank, I mean to say, is one third. The rank, the latest is India rank 131 with respect to this development index. Norway stops the index. The country of Norway is the top one. Sri Lanka is at 72. China is 85. Bangladesh is at 133 and Pakistan is 154. Obviously, you need to know the rank of India and which country tops the rank, that is the Norway. Now coming to, yes, the protocols. First, we'll let talk about Montreal Protocol. Now, with respect to this protocol, there is always a keyword seen in examination as ozone layer. So that's how it is remembered. So the object is basically to protect the ozone layer by phasing out of, you know, the numerous substances that are responsible for depletion. Uh, it regulates the production and consumption of uh, handmade, you know, chemical referred as ozone depleting substance. So that is, uh, this protocol takes care of this particular 
substances that is decrease of particular substances it is adopted on it was adopted on 16th september uh, 1987 which is also called as ozone day the protocol is uh, is to date the only un uh, united nation territory that has been ratified by every country uh, on the earth all 198 united nation members that is universally ratified so it is a part of you know your uh, ratification as a part of your uh, rule or law you can say then going to the next is keto protocol which was adopted in japan on december 11 1997 again in keto protocol you can see one of the uh, i mean to say the keyword is emission okay greenhouse gases these are the related keywords which you can find in examination so basically it is to uh, o a complex ratification process and it came into force and on 16th of feb 2005 currently there are 102 parties which are related to you know this protocol so what it does is it operationalize the united nation framework convention on climate change by doing or committing the industrialized countries and economies to limit the greenhouse gas that is you know emission so it is an international agreement which is basically aimed at to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions and the presence of greenhouse gas that's why i said the keyword is emission okay so you have to remember like that the paris agreement we are going to do paris agreement in detail also was an agreement with the united nation framework convention on climate change dealing with greenhouse emission gases that is strategies mitigation you can say whereas keto protocol is a treaty that commits the state to reduce the greenhouse emissions that is based on the scientific consequences so uh, uh, consequences so let's see i mean to say in detail also we are going to study the uh, paris agreement uh, next is uh, nagoya protocol so it is you know it is the second protocol to the convention on biological diversity which was adopted on 29th of october 2010 as i said this is a revision lecture i am sorry i'm disturbing uh, you people in between but uh, this is a revision lecture and i need to complete the whole theory part in one go uh, but as i said that it is not possible for you people to come back and read the or see the video once again so please ensure that you are keeping your you know notepad ready so you are utilizing it as i said montreal protocol you have written okay ozone keto protocol you have written okay it is a mission about you know carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases so nag Na sorry nagoya protocol it is basically related to the conventional biological diversity so it was uh, adopted in the year 2010 and it came into force in 2014 japan so you may have the place also uh, keto where or you know nagoya protocol where so you should be able to uh, understand it and you know ensure that your uh, your smart notes will help you out with all this recalling part okay now talking about uh, the aim that is three objectives were based it was based on three objectives with reference to you know assess the resources fair and equitable benefits and utilization or conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity it provides a legal framework for effective implementation as one of the objectives on convention of biological diversity now uh, yes the convention on biological diversity which is also called as the biodiversity convention okay it's a multilateral treaty uh, it has three goals as we have discussed right now con uh, that is conservation sustainability and fair and fair and equitable benefits so it was actually open for signature uh, in the earth summit that is in rio uh, rio summit you can say on 5th of june 1992 and by end of july 1993 165 nations had signed this treaty uh, it came into force on 1993 that is 29th of december and it was the first uh, time in international law that the converse um, conversation of biodiversity it's a one of the common concern of human kind and one of the important part of development process coming to yes we have been seeing this word that is conference convention protocol treaty so conference it's nothing but you know you initiate the discussion conventions that you know you streamline the discussion you eliminate what is not needed and you take the things which is needed which has you know came out of uh, uh, your discussion protocol basically it is uh, it it tells about what it tells about you know you have to uh, enter you know into 
uh, something which will definitely help each and every country in the world for your you know for for the betterment for the benefit where there is it, it is it is voluntarily it is not made mandatory but the moment it's it's signed into treaty it is a mandatory part for every country you know to ensure that they are doing what has been promised so with that reference we have a lot of you know options uh, conferences uh, we have done some protocols but some still are there so let's see one by one so the united nation conference on M environmental and uh, sorry environment and development many times it is seen that the acronym comes and you have to write the full form correctly and the year also so it's also known as the earth summit or rio de Do that is that was uh, held at rio do sorry rio de janeiro brazil so this was the global conference which was held on the 20th anniversary of the first international conference of Stockholm 1972. Uh, the outcomes were three things that is the Rio G. Gen sorry, Rio de Janeiro Agenda 21 and Forest Principles. Now let's see what was this Rio Declaration. Uh, environment and development around the world. Uh, it was also called as uh, informally Earth Summit. 24, 27 principles with major topic was human role in the protection of environment for Rio declaration. Now, uh, we had two summits that is Rio plus 10 and plus 20. So which was in the year 2002 with uh, what uh, with uh, the following points that is World Summit on Sustainable Development, uh, which was from 26th of August to 4th of September in 2002. The Jonasburg declaration was one of the main outcome of the summit. So it was formed uh, to commit Agenda 21 about that is Millennium Development Goals, that is your MDGs. And it was a 10 year follow-up okay, uh, with United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, uh, 10th anniversary of 1992 Earth Summit or United Nations Conference on Environment and Development was held in Rio, Rio, sorry, Rio de Janeiro, that is in Brazil. Next was the 20. That is in the year 2012. Okay. You're just, I have just made a small correction. It is 2012. Okay. So it is basically known as the Rio or Earth Summit with, a con with an uh, aim of sustainable development, that is with reference to economic and environmental goals. And definitely it was a 20 year follow up, okay, which, uh, which was held in the same city and the 10th anniversary of 2000 uh, as the 2002 World Summit sustain on Sustainable Development, that is in Jonasburg, okay. So we have two Rio's that is Rio plus 20 and plus 10, 10 with a 10 year follow up and 20 with a 20 year follow up. Then we have the next something called as Agenda 21. Now, what is this Agenda 21? It's a non-binding United Nations related to sustainable development with an outcome of, you know, United Nations Conference, which was held in 1992. So it is a, sorry, it is a 3050 page document, okay, which is divided into 40 chapters and into four sections. So this 21 refers to the 21st century. It, the aim is to achieve the global uh, sustainable development. So it is nothing but a blueprint of action, uh, which has to be taken globally, that is in the form of nationally and locally, uh, in every area with respect in which humans directly affect the environment. So basically, it focus about environment, which is, you know, where the humans are directly, uh, definitely affected. For implementation of this point, a Commission on Sustainable Development was also established in the year 1992 in order to check that things are in place. Now, forest principles. Now, this forest principles definitely uh, was a non-legal, it is non-legally by comment uh, that several recommendations for the conservation and sustainable development for all type of forest were made. That is, you know, taking part, greening of the world, into greening of the world. So yes, the outcomes, as I said, I have just summarized over here. So the outcomes were the global conference that is 20th and anniversary, which was held at Stockholm 1972 with the Earth Summit falling into Rio de, Rio de Janeiro, Agenda 21 and Forest Principles. Coming to next is the United Nations Con Framework Convention on Climate Change. So this is, uh, which had, you know, was one of the five outcomes of Rio Summit. So it is one of the five outcomes of Rio Summit. It is non-legally binding. So you don't, it's not a force. It's a voluntary part. It did not set any mandatory limits. As I said, non-legal, you know, so it's no, there was no mandatory limit for greenhouse emission. Neither it contained any enfor enforcement mechanism. 
it said that protocols will be legally binding and enforcement with the help of keto protocol so objective was to you know stabilize the greenhouse con concentrations and uh, stop the any damage activities or prevent the activities which are dangerous which was adopted in 1992 and uh, it was you know so open for signature in 1992 itself that is in the month of june and it came into force in 1994 with you know a lot of countries ratifying the uh, concept talking about indcs that is indented nationally determined contributors as one of the uh, conference of parties that is 19 so during the warsaw summit 2013 countries agreed to you know uh, outline what actions need to be taken under the global agreement before the paris summit 2015 so they achieve, they are, can be reviewed after five years. So there was one question in one of the paper that after how many years they are being reviewed. So it is after every five years. So you see how the questions can be a part of out of your theory. So you have to just ensure that your eyes are and ears are properly, I mean to say the open, you hear what is said and you definitely take a note of it. So they are contributions submitted by the government on 2nd of October, that is as in Gandhi Jayanti pledge. It is basically improving the emission intensity by 30 to 35% with an agenda uh, to be completed by 2030. And uh, the share of non-fossil fuels to 40% by again 2030. Uh, plus they have the forest cover which can absorb 2.5 sentence, you know, uh, cent, uh, percentage, sorry, 2.5 percentage of carbon dioxide by 2030. And to install 175 gigapower of solar wind and biomass electricity by 2020. So here there are a lot of facts. So you should just keep noted down GDP by 33 to 35%, fossil fuels by 40, forest cover by 2.52%, and the installation of 175 gigapower gigap, uh, watts with the biomass electricity by 2022. Uh, so yes. Uh, as I said, uh, under keto protocol, we did protocol, but under keto protocol, there was a question with reference to commitments. So there are till now, there are two commitments. The first commitment was from 2008 to 2012. The second commitment was from uh, 13 to 20. So you should know this commitment, uh, how many commitments and uh, how many um, years also from what to what year. So the target was basically six main, uh, I mean to say it, to cover the emission of six main greenhouse gases, that was carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, hydrofluorocarbons, plurfluorocarbons, uh, sulfur hexafluoride. Man, more than 35 countries has been binding the targets for the first uh, time. Okay, So you should be aware of these commitments, the periods, and which gases, the six greenhouse, which gases. So that there again, there was a question out of this. So which six gases, so odd man out it was. So that also has to be understood very correctly now uh, yes we did uh, all these things but still convention on bi biological diversity uh, it uh, sorry convention on biological diversity which was an international legally binding treaty to sustain the diversity of life of the earth which was open for signature in 1992 and came into force in 1993 the three goals of this were you know con conservation of biodiversity sustainable use of biodiversity fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of you know genetic resources so this was the overall objective uh, which led to the sustainable future uh, its governing body is none other than the conference of parties that is cop then yes national action plan on climate change last two three years there are a lot of questions on this also so you have to be alert when i'm saying a lot of questions so you have to be alert for this topic so it was launched on 30th of June 2008 with eight missions. So there, there once there was a question is totally how many missions? There are eight missions. Uh, yes, it was basically to understand or promote the climate change, the adaptation, the mitigation, that is, you know, the strategies for the efficiency and natural uh, resource conservation. Uh, Prime Minister Council. Now, for this also, there was a question that which council is, you know, charge of in charge of this. So, Prime Minister Council is in charge of this particular thing. And which are those eight missions, which are given as below? That is, uh, mission with reference to solar, uh, which was I have purposely written the dates. That was Jan 2010 to promote solar power. Mission for uh, you know energy efficiency in 2009. 
Sustainable Habitat 2011, Water Mission, Sustaining the Himalayan Ecosystem, that is 2014. Then it is Green India, uh, it was 2014 again, uh, Sustainable Agriculture 2010, and Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change Approved is in 2017. So yes, these are the eight missions. So we have to be very, very careful. There are questions on this. Uh, now, yes, let's talk about some Stockholm uh, Conference of 1972, which was international conference, uh, which was held in Stockholm, that is Sweden, from 5th of June to uh, 19, sorry, 16th of June. That's the reason 5th of June was celebrated as World Environmental Day. It is marked as one of the turning point in inter international environmental politics. So containing 26 principles, you know, and the action plan with 109 recommendations. So this is the speciality about, you know, United Nations Conference on Human Environment. Next we have is the United Nations Environment Program that is uh, UNEP, which was, you know, founded in June 1972, uh, headquarters at Kenya. Uh, analyzing and identifying, you know, uh, blood, uh, sorry, analyzing and identifying the global environment uh, problem with respect to regional and international environmental, uh, I mean to say, yes, uh, inter international environment program with respect to, you know, and promoting environmental science and information. Now, when we talk about this, the metrologic, the World Metrological Organization, uh, that is, United Nations Environment Program was established as an intergovernmental panel on uh, climate change. Uh, that is in 1988. Uh, yes, the activities related to the seven broad thematic areas under this United Nations Environmental Program are as follows. That is climate change, disasters and conflicts, ecosystem management, environmental governance, uh, environment, environment under review to harm, uh, sorry, to uh, with respect to harmful substances resource efficiency, it is one of the several Im implementing agencies for global environment and has registered uh, successive uh, su several successive uh, programs such as the Montreal Protocol and the Minamata Convention to limit the toxic mercury. So Minamata Convention, you can just remember the key word is with respect to mercury. Okay, now chlorofluorocarbons. Again, this is one of the important. Uh, topic where the questions are seen that is you know depleting known as the ozone depleting substances which is used in production of plastic foams uh, cleaning electronic components and pressurizing agents that is in aerosol cans so they are non-toxic non-flammable chemicals containing atoms of carbon chlorine and fluorine which are used in aerosol sprays okay blowing agents for foams and packing materials or solvent and refrigerators so this uh, these are all these topics or this points are with respect to all the questions which were seen in previous year with respect to chlorofluorocarbons then yes now we have the list of days i mean to say there are uh, various days because many a times there has been seen that mass the following comes with you know recognition of the days so World Forest Day, Water Day, Resource Day, Atmosphere Day, Earth Day, Mi Migratory Day, Biodiversity Day, Environmental Day. That is all with reference to your syllabus. One Mohotsav Week, then Population Day, Wildlife Week, Natural Day, Wildlife Day, uh, Birds Day, Conservation, Energy, uh, energy Conver uh, sorry, Conservation Day. Then we have as International Day of Education, Earth Day, Bi International Biological Diversity, World Environmental Day. Uh, then the wetland day, the forestry day, world water day, earth day, some may be repeated, but you know, this is just to give you a clear idea. Ozone day, which we did world wildlife uh, week. Then we have international day for natural disaster reduction and national pollution prevention day. And all these important days are with out of your syllabus itself. So I mean to say out um, as a part of your syllabus, which you need to definitely revise very well again which is very factual so you have to be very careful for this okay now yes next is the hydrometeorological hazards which is again an important topic seen in the uh, paper so it is by extreme meteorological and climate events in the form of now what are these hydrometeorological hazards in the form of floods droughts hurricanes tornadoes landslides or muds, mudslides uh, it is in the form of typhoons, uh, you know, or blizzard, that is a snowfall, heavy snowfall, avalanches, or the floods resulting in, including the flash floods, which the latest one is funny, that is May 2019, 
bulbul in november 2019 was that is in west bengal am farm that is again in west bengal and yas in west bengal or odisha and charkan so the latest one i have uh, listed it you know you can get as a part of your uh, ex- current affairs also yes there is a concept called as earthar okay uh, which is a world wild movement by world wild fund okay which talks about uh, encouraging the individuals communities and businesses to turn off the electric lights with when it is not essential to use so for that an hour is dedicated that is from 8:30 pm to 9:30 on a specific day towards the end of the march as a symbol of commitment to the planet uh it was started as a lights off event in sydney uh, initially that is australia in 2007 and it has been marked as you know earth uh, r that is uh, earth r as a concept widely known as so in 2021 it happened on 27th of march 2021 the theme was climate change to save earth the next schedule is 26th of march 2022 uh so this is basically a glass a global grassroots movement in order to unite the people to take you know action against the environmental issue and protect the pla- clim- uh, sorry planet uh now this movement is definitely going to reach you know every uh, i mean to say is going to symbolize the commitment towards the nature and planet by the uh, individuals or by the country so this is one concept which should you be aware of Yes then i was talking about paris agreement yes it is one of the legally binding international treaty which was adopted at a con- uh, conference of parties that is by 196 countries on 20 uh, sorry 12th of december 2015 and came into force on 4th of november 2016 it is the glo- goal is to limit the global warming preferably below 2 uh, sorry below 2 preferably 1.5 degrees celsius to the pre industrial levels and yes it is to reach the peak of greenhouse emission as soon as possible so it is one of the multilateral climate change process and it is legally binding towards all the nations you know to undertake the efforts in order to fight the climate change and adapt uh, to its effect then it's a five year cycle uh, yes by 2020 countries submit their plans uh, for climate action uh, sorry which will be known as national that is by every country so it is called as nationally determined countries and it will definitely see to the reduction of greenhouse emissions and uh, it also provides a framework for financial technical and uh, capacity building support to those countries who need it yes the next topic which we have as pollution so it is definitely a uh, effect which is un- which brings an undesirable changes in the surroundings uh and also affects the planet's humans and animals and it is uh, you know it is not only the pollution but it is you know with the help of you know uh, it adds to a substance like solid liquid gas in any form of you know energy uh, which causes a negative effect so it is uh, pollution is nothing so it pollutant is substance which cause pollution which can definitely uh, rapidly uh, have an if uh, negative effect you know uh, on the environment and it can see that is there are uh, it leads or it is because of lot of human made activities in the form of construction transportation you know or manufacturing and um, that is in the form of volcanic eruptions release of methane emission of natural gases nitrogen oxide cosmic rays uv rays ultraviolet rays so let's see quickly the type that is air pollution so- soil noise water and radiation pollution so starting with types of pollutant which are two types that is primary and secondary prime primary which are directly uh, emitted there is also question that they give you the some examples and they ask you which is primary or which is you know secondary so one which is direct or primary in the form of storms volcanoes or you know uh, human activities such as revolution transportation so uh, either form of you know like for example carbon do- carbon oxides nitrogen oxide sulfur oxide hydrocarbon particulate material are the form of this examples Sec- that is primary examples when we talk about secondary it is which is indirectly emitted by you know by the reaction in the prim- primary pollutants so sulfur acid sulfuric acid that is sulfur dioxide reacts with water vapor uh in that atmosphere and form the secondary pollutant that is called as sulfuric acid so one of the like like that nitric acid ozone the peroxyl acetyl nitrate 
is the one which reacts with ozone and hydrochloric acid in order to you know uh, which is found in burnt petroleum and they are com commonly called as photochemical smog so there were, there were as i said there were the question scenes on primary and secondary pollutants with the help of example so the one which come directly are primaries and the one which is in reaction with primary is called as secondary then air pollution yes which is a kind of solid liquid or gaseous substance can form uh, or can lead to the problem in eye skin and respiratory system uh, can form a smog that is combination of smoke and fog okay which was coined by vox that is in 1905 uh, it is also due to smoke or soot, which we call uh, interaction with sunlight uh, with the suspend, suspended particles. Uh, and 1st of April, I mean to say it's 2017, uh, there was a ban on sale and registration of uh, Bharat Stage 3 vehicles. And the Bharat Stage has set the norms regarding the permissible level of the pollutants. The air quality index is the evaluation. Okay, so here the standard and time limit for implementations are set by whom? That is by the Central Pollution Board, uh, which comes under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Now, talking about water pollution, the presence of undesirable elements in water has led to water pollution in the form of major water pollutants such as industrial waste released in water. So there are other pollutants like, for example, untreated waste uh, sewage water or pesticide from farms or uh, mercury presence of mercury lead arsenic uh, for example you as i said mercury uh, toxic uh, which we have seen various examples earlier also oil spills or hot water release from industries uh, into water and misuse of uh, groundwater so yes these are the examples of water pollution Soil pollution is one which can cause harm, harmful consequences on living beings by deteriorating the fertility and uh, can also pollute, uh, you know, the use, uh, sorry, can also be polluted by the use of polluted water. So the sources can be fertilizer, plus pesticides, plastics, contaminated water, fly ash, landfills and chemical resides like acids, metallic waste from the industries and non-degradable as waste and garbage. So noise pollution, there's, there's a question frequently seen on this so it's an unwanted sound you know which definitely leads to noise pollution which has an, a huge impact in the form of hearing loss or increased blood pressure reduction efficiency in the work efficiency depression disturb pattern of sleeps so the world uh, health organization has recommended a normal noise level at uh, you know 45 decibel by daytime and 35 by night so many a times you get a question on industrial and you know uh, daytime and nighttime limits so if it is industrial if it is commercial residential or silent zone what is the limit so many times the questions are seen on this so this table you should be rem remembering very well db stands for decibel it's nothing but the union unit of measurement uh, measuring noise Coming to radioactive pollution that is caused by radioactive elements in the form of emission of alpha, beta and gamma rays, which can lead to, lead to pollution, use of nuclear weapons or the radio strobes into the water bodies, or chemical spills in the form of you know, particles into environment during mining and cosmic rays in the Earth's atmosphere. Now, yes, here also I've given a new table in the form of air quality index, the levels and the colors. So uh, 0 to 50 indicates good uh, green in color, 51 to 100 moderate yellow in color, 101 to 150 unhealthy, which will be orange in color, 151 to 200, it is unhealthy, red in color, this is dangerous, 201 to 300, very unhealthy, purple in color and maroon represents, you know, hazardous. So you can also get a question based on this air quality index, which was seen with the, either with the levels or with the color. So you should be aware of this. Coming to the pollutants, uh, basically that is uh, particulate material, PM 2.5, ozone, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, lead or ammonia. So air quality is basically used by government agencies in order to you know, communicate the public how the air uh, how polluted the air is and this is a system which is used to warn people uh, about the dangerous danger of air pollution now uh, we have studied what is bad uh, biodegradable and sorry biodegradable and non-biodegradable substances 
so the one which can be broken down into simple organic forms or you know inorganic substances is called biodegradable but one which cannot be broken down it is non biodegradable so the waste is made up of natural but it is made up of synthetic substances they do not disturb the ecology and do not cause pollution whereas they leads to a lot of disturbance into the ecology or uh, ecological balance and cause pollution they have a very short life whereas non non biodegradable have a very long life examples are in the form of cow dung or agricultural waste they are in the form of radioactive waste or chemical waste coming to yes certain few topics on which the questions are seen that is blue baby syndrome is is syndrome sorry it's nothing but the condition that affects the oxygen transportation in the blood and which results into the blueness of the skin which is uh, it's common form uh, cause in uh, that is uh, sorry it's most common of uh, blue baby syndrome that is water contaminated with nitrate and if the baby drinks that you know the uh, water rich in nitrate gets uh, converted the body gets converted into nitrites and which bind the hemoglobin in the body uh, and when it forms or when it uh, you know meets the hemoglobin level it is unable to carry the oxygen and that's the reason we can see the discoloration in the form of you know skin turning into bluish color a uh, photochemical smog we just now studied it is one uh, it is a type of smog which is produced when ultraviolet light from the sun reacts with nitrogen oxide it is visible as a brown haze and is you know prominent during the morning and afternoon especially in densely populated and warm cities so the major com component are nitrogen oxide or the volatile organic compounds and ultraviolet sunlight uh, ultraviolet light that is in the form of sunlight yes uh, noise we studied the noise levels for industry and as well as you know residential but uh, let us see the source and effects also if it is 135 it is pneumatic drill which is very pain painful 110 rock band which is very discomfortable 88 that is the traffic which is you know hearing impairment on prolonged exposure 80 is alarm clock that is which is a lot annoying and 65 that is city average traffic which is impressive so these are the effects you may get question out of this you know there is no question yet seen but the table is formed so that in case if you get it you can able to write it now yes uh, this i have done just now so uh, the same thing but uh, in case if you just uh, can re read it and revise it it will be better for you uh, silent zones earlier observed around 10 meters of hospital or educational institutions will no longer be silent zone unless notified by the government so like now if it is understood until it is notified by the government they will be not declared as a silent zone yeah sorry the same thing i guess is been repeated for that okay for a clear idea now yes so one of the uh, question common seen was minamata disaster that is you know, it's a methyl mercury poisoning which is uh, again a cause due to the consumption of large quantities of fish and shellfish that are heavily contaminated with the chemical in the form you know which has been discharged from the factories into the sea so the mercury was uh, in the waste product dumped into minamata bay that was you know on massive scale uh, done by one of the chemical factory in 1956 in japan and the mercury contaminated fish living in minamata bay people ate those fishes and definitely became ill and that's how this minamata disease was you know a, a big uh, a huge uh, thing to be remembered so just that is it started with what and due to the consumption of what and what year that is 1956 in japan yes now you have metals the permissible concentration and sources again there is no specific question seen on this but just to you know brief you of with uh, this i have just formed in the form of table and some important sources you can remember whether it is respect to aluminium copper mercury cadmium and lead so what exactly the sources are aluminium whether it is you know solid or industrial waste copper in the form of smelt uh, smelting or mining mercury in the form of uh, uh, plants thermal power plants or fluorescent lamps hospital waste uh, electrical appliances cadmium in the form of melting or waste batteries or e waste lead in the form of uh, lead uh, acid batteries or you know e waste or cold uh, based thermal power plants so there are 20 35 metals that are a concern for us because of the residential or occupational exposure out of which 23 are very heavy metals and they are atomic arsenic blue uh, bismuth cadmium selenium chromium cobalt
कॉपर गैलेनियम आयन लीड गोल्ड आयन लीड मैग्नीस मर्क्यूरी निकल प्लैटिनम सिल्वर ट्रिलियम थालियम टिन यूरानियम एंड वैंडियम now you may not get all this but at least remember the numbers because you know the most heavy metals number wise you can remember at least 20 out of 35 23 the next come as organic pollutants that is you know originate from the domestic sewage that is raw uh, or treated or urban runoff or industrial uh, trade uh, this sewage influence is the greatest source of organic materials which is discharged in the fresh waters they include the presence of chemically active compounds as a discharge from the industries they are rich in marine water these chemically active compounds include microplastic or leading to chemical additives and per persistent organic pollutants the sources of fossil fuels or organic chemicals or particulate material or vehicle emissions so these uh, you may get a question on sources so how these sources are formed the next is uh, noise pollution we have done an answer but this is with reference to the uh, measurement only so it is talking about the standard sound intensity which is uh, followed by magnitude called as 1 picowatt that is you know uh, not at all sound is considered uh, no sound considered so the world organization defines that no noise above 65 decibels is a noise pollution so here the prefix uh, it's 1 trillion that is pico is nothing but a unit symbol uh then coming to yes we have started this uh, you know the announcement of 40% power generation capacity as a renewable energy by 2030 in that how it is divided that is 350 uh, gigawatts by 2030 and india has currently installed the capacity of 275 so the huge boost in the country's renewable energy target will ma majorly comprise of solar that is which has contributed to 250 gigawatts and wind power which was contributed to 100 gigawatts yes now yes there was a question on this so you should remember solar how much and you know wind power how much then yes um, greenhouse gas effect is one of the process which occurs when gases in the earth's atmosphere are trapped in the sun's heat so what this greenhouse gases include that is water vapor carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide ozone and artificial chemicals such as chlorofluorocarbons and the absorbed energy warms the atmosphere and the surface of the earth so that the warmth is because of this trap okay so you should remember this gases uh mostly the question comes on the gases uh yes now the greenhouse gases again your causes and sources i have written many times the question is seen out of this so carbon dioxide it is for fossil fuel and deforestation flow chlorofluorocarbons refrigerators insulation foams aerosol cans uh, cans as i said uh, industrial and commercial use nitrogen oxide in the form of fossil fuel burning fertilizer burning of food or crop uh, residue methane is in the form of growing paddy etc of cattle and lively stocks or termites so these are the sources you should remember the sources very well uh depletion important ozone depleting chemicals so chlorofluorocarbons that is we have repeated just just now refrigeration or aerosol forms halon that is fire fighting scfc that is you know uh, in the form of aerosol or refrigeration uh hydrochlorofluorocarbons that is methyl uh, methyl chlor chloroform that is solvent and carbon dioxide tetrachloride that is again solvent okay used in what then next is talking about some of the important legislation for environmental protection so this is you know the legislations which have been taken that is the national green tribunal the air prevention control control of pollution the water prevention the hazardous waste prevention other laws are you know the indian forest act the wildlife protection act the forest conservation public liability protection of plant varieties biological diversity and the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers now this are please remember these are uh, not seen as in question but in one of the theory part i read it and it was just given the heading so you just read to just read it once don't give you know more concentration for this particular part yes renewable source of energy which are non depletable or naturally re re uh, replenishable such as solar energy or heat of the earth or plants okay or ocean currents the thermal efficiency of energy station uh, is percentage of heat that is you know uh, that is change into work so geothermal it is from beneath the earth surface and it finds the surface uh, in the form of hot springs or geysers the efficiency is low as around 7 to 10% 
solar energy is uh, more efficient that is close to 50% uh, the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms uh, it is the heat and light energy produced as a result of the fusion and fission reactions the producers produce food by photosynthesis and it's responsible for you know all weather phenomena such as wind storm rain or heat waves then next one we have is wind energy which is generated by you know a uh, renewable energy that is restricted to certain geographical areas which includes wind turbines uh, uh, and yes it is a direct conversion that elimination which implies elimination of mechanical uh, rot machines uh, they are used to convert wind energy to electricity uh, india has ranked fifth in the world with the total power capacity of 1100 uh, sorry 1080 megawatts and the states like gujarat maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh Uh, our potential for wind energy development the efficiency is 35 to 45 percent when it comes to nuclear the efficiency is 33 so here i have just written a conclusion also maybe the questions can come on the efficiency so it is basically splitting atoms to release the energy so if you see geothermal that is 7 to 10 nuclear 33 wind 35 to 45 solar is 50 geothermal has the least efficiency of electrical power generation now uh, yes you may get also which has the least uh, part and which has the highest so solar is the highest geothermal is the least uh yes every year 5 and 1/2 billion tons of carbon is released by bo- burning fossil fuels so the massive amount of 3.3 billion tons stays in the atmosphere and uh, becomes dissolved in sea waters so the carbon moves from atmosphere to the oceans India is the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases accounts for 2.46 met- metric tons that is 6.8 total global emission so the india ranks at 12 percent which is overall very high rating with reference to greenhouse gas emission uh, then earthquake yeah you need to know the magnitude and strength if it is on a, a scale of 8 or more great 7 to 7.9 major 6 to 6.9 that is strong 5 to 5.9 moderate 4 to 4.9 light and 3 to 3.9 this minor so you may get a question out of you know uh, magnitude the strength and form so yes now what we revised at the start that is this this protocols and agreements and uh, commissions are very important so I, again i'm just quickly going to have a, a quick uh, a glance montreal protocol 87 that is ozone depletion Rio summit also known as Earth Summit United Nation conference on environmental development in 1992 that is as we studied agenda 21 climate change bio- biological diversity Rio 10 and 20 conference then we have convention on biological diversity that is 1992 so sustainability fair and equitable treatment and conserve biological diversity Kyoto protocol which is referenced to with greenhouse gases uh, India is ratified in 2002 it's actually started in 1997 and the carbon trading and penalties for non compliance if you're not following the rule international solar alliance that is india and france started in 2015 uh, with the promotion of you know use of solar energy uh, setting up an e portal or reducing the total cost for solar, solar energy coming to paris agreement which was formed in 2015 with an intensity to you know uh, em- reduce emission by 2030 uh financial help from you know or from other countries uh increasing the carbon sink uh deplet investing more in this programs and uh, joint collaborative research and development for future yes now there is a concept of united nation read now this is basically uh reducing emission for deforestation and forest degradation that is read plus which was founded in 2008 to reduce as i said to uh, emission of deforestation uh it refer plus refers to conservation of the carbon stocks or sustainable management so which was as a international negotiation formed by united nation climate convention on climate change uh with an uh, focus on reducing the emissions from the deforestation and forest degradation so this project is located in southern countries today there are more than 4 450 of them the headquarters is in geneva and the membership is you know 60 of 65 partner countries then we have international biological diversity which is uh, deals with uh, bi- biodiversity uh, issues which is a result of you know uh, 
the post 2015 developmental agenda sustainability developmental goal uh, yes the theme of 2021 was we are a part of the solution which was basically you know uh, with reference to the solutions which are in the nature and uh, this will answer the sustainable development challenges uh, every year it is observed as an international day in on 22nd of may uh, with the issue of biodiversity uh, brazil is the most biodiversity sorry biodiverse country on the planet whereas one tenth of the world's overall fishes call it has a home uh, coming to greenhouse gases, one update that is, you know, uh, observing satellite that is Ubiqui, that is GOSAT is the world's first spacecraft to measure the concentrations of carbon dioxide and methane uh, and the two major greenhouse gases from the space, which was launched on 2009. So this is also known as Ubiqui, that is meaning the breath is one of the question also uh, in the form of Earth observation satellite and the world's first satellite dedicated to greenhouse monitoring. Now the giant panda, uh, the animal which has, you know, uh, featured animal logo uh, for World Life uh, Fund, WWF, which we have seen uh, in Earth are also. So it is one of the endangered species and should be, you know, permitted uh, for the natural environment of their origin. So the idea was using a female panda uh, at London Zoo, that is the furry animal appealing with more appeal, uh, which was decided to be an excellent logo. And another reason for keeping it as just black and white is to minimize the cost. So it is the World Life uh, Fund for Nature is in one of the international non-governmental organization, which uh, definitely uh, is formed uh, with respect to the reduction of human impact on environment, uh, which is official name is which remains its official name in Canada and United Nation uh, United States. Uh, coming to the specific uh, species, sorry, which are classified as United Nation, that is IUCN Red List, which are nine groups. So what are they? That is the rate of declination, uh, population, geographical distribution. Uh, you also call them as the uh, degree of population or distribution fragmentation. So these, uh, they are divided into the nine categories, which are highlighted for your benefit. So the International Union for Conservation of Nature, that is ICUN, is an uh, international organization again, which is used, which is working for the sustainable use of natural resources, and it was founded in 1984. India became the member in 1969 uh, with the help of Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. This is of your importance, and the office was established in 2007 in Delhi. Then UNESCO, with reference to UNESCO, the one which is uh, responsible for promoting the world peace and security. The mission is to build a culture of peace, eradicate poverty, sustainable development, uh, then interculture with the help of education, science, communication, information. India became the member in 1946. Uh, the logo block is composed of three parts, that is the emblem, the temple, uh, that is and the, included in the UNESCO acronym. The complete name United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization is one of the several languages A dotted line is the progression form. So there are six official languages of UNESCO that is Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian and Spanish. So these were two forms where, you know, sentences or topics where you can get questions on. Then we have is, um, yes, UNESCO, which is launched 1971. The Man's and Biosphere Program, that is MAP, okay, which is again to establish the relationship between people and environment. There are 18 bios, biospheres, uh, sorry, biosphere reserves in India. Uh, definitely the benefit is the human livelihood to improve the human livelihood and to promote the economic development. So these 18 biospheres are given as follows, as uh, followed with reference to the uh, states also. So just you can take a pause. Uh, I mean to say some points I've highlighted where the questions were formed on. Kutch is the one with the largest area and Nilgiri, that is Tamil Nadu, Kerala, was a fund to be first included in this biosphere reserves in India. Uh, yes, you have something called as international impact assessment, which talks about the process of evaluating the environmental impacts uh, proposed project or development, taking into account the cultural, socioeconomic and human health. The it is the purpose is to identify, evaluate, and report the effects, and it includes you know mitigation measures that are used to uh, eliminate of the effects which are where wherever it is appropriate. 
Yes, and that's how we have completed this particular unit. I know this is very, very factual. Uh, so when you are uh, seeing at the video at particular time or point, you can just take a pause and ensure that the topics are done very clearly by you so that you get a clean idea about the topic and your revision is done in a uh, proper manner so that you can just be assured for this unit for your upcoming examination. All the best to everyone and thank you for watching this video.